Hello. Today we're solving a classic Sudoku by Philip Newman, which is called Category 3. I assume that like a Category 3 hurricane, the Sudoku is going to maybe blow the shingles off of our roofs, but is hopefully not going to tear the entire roof off like a Category 5 Sudoku. Let's have a look. So it is pretty common in easy handmade classic Sudoku for the setter to indicate something they want you to look at early on, or perhaps just where they started working by giving you sets of consecutive digits, especially ones that start with kind of one, two, three, four, five. And the first thing that stands out to me in this puzzle is these digits, which are eight of the nine digits in the puzzle, only missing a four. These two digits, eight and nine, can't appear in these cells, so they're going to have to go in these cells which leaves only a two, three, and four to finish the column. And because I have a two and four in this row already, we'll place a three here and a two, four pair. Across the grid, I have a symmetrical deduction where in this column, one and two are ruled out of these cells. So we're going to place them here. That leaves us with six, seven, and eight. The six and eight can't go in this row. So that's going to be a six, eight pair with a seven in row four. Now, if we look at the top row and the bottom row, we get a little bit of a twist on that deduction where we get even more info. So here we have a six and seven ruling six and seven out of these cells. Seven is also ruled out of this cell by the seven in the column. So this time we don't have to pencil in a pair. We can just write in our six and seven. We need to place a four, eight, and nine in the row to finish the row. Four can't go into these two cells. So we're gonna put a four there and our only unfilled cells there are an eight, nine pair. Here we have three and four that go into these two cells but the three can't go in this position. So it goes there. And our remaining digits are a 1, 2, and 6. The 6 can only go in that position. And this is going to be a 1, 2 pair. Now, what do we look at next? So we need to place in these 2 by 2 regions the digits 4, 5, 6, 7, and 3, 4, 5, 6. And sure enough, there are some digits that are in that set that see most of the two by two region. In this case, these two fours see every cell remaining except for this one. The six now sees both of these remaining cells, so six can only go there. And we're going to place a five, seven pair in these cells. Down here, we need to place three, four, five, six, and we get something very similar where we have two sixes that see these cells, so we're gonna place six there. Four can no longer go here or here, so it goes here. And these cells are going to contain a three, five pair. Now, what next? So, I have a four here that I just placed. The four sees these cells. These cells are already occupied and I have a four in this row, so I have a hidden four in this region. And I'm going to pencil in my three remaining digits here. Those are going to be three, five, and nine. And that jumps out at me because I just placed this three, five pair and those digits are kind of concordant with that. This nine here also makes this just a three or five, which tells me this three, five pair has to contain the digits three and five in some order. Therefore, this must be a nine. And I'm gonna try to make the same deduction symmetrically here. I have a six that sees these cells. The six sees this. And so six in this region can only go here. I need to place a one, a five, and a seven. And I have the same situation where I have one, five, and seven here. The one can't go in this position. Therefore, the five, seven pair rules five and seven out of that cell, making it a one. And there we go. And now if we scan across the rows, we can actually finish these cells because of the four and seven here. And we can finish these cells because of the three and six here. And that allows us to get these pairs. Now we're gonna turn our attention to these two by two regions. So we need to place the digits one, two, eight, and nine. We have a one and eight in this column already. So this will be our two and nine, and this will be our one and eight. We can't disambiguate those yet, but they're just pairs. It's worth penciling them in at this point. Here we also need one, two, eight, and nine. These are going to be one and eight. These are going to be two and nine. These rows are nearly complete. So I'm going to look at these now. I still need a one and three. Three can't go in this position. So that's three and that's one. Here, I still need a seven and nine. Seven can't go in that position, so that is a seven and that is a nine. And my remaining digits are going to be two, five, and eight in some unknown order. So now let's look at the only boxes that we haven't turned our attention to yet. So what do we see that maybe overlaps a lot of this region? I do see these two threes. 
and this three here, actually. So even just using these two, I can rule three out of every cell in this region except for this one. And now I need to place a one, two, and five in the region, but the one can't go in these two cells, so it goes here. The five goes there, and here's my two. That lets me disambiguate the pairs that I placed earlier, like this. This can no longer be two or five, so it's an eight. And that gives me my eight, nine pair that I have been sitting on for quite a while. This is the only remaining digit here, it's a seven. The one here makes this a two and a one, and resolves this. The last remaining digit in this column will be a nine, and the digits here will be five and eight because we already have a five, we can place those now. And let's go ahead and finish up. And that is how you solve category three by Philip Newman. I hope you enjoyed it.